whether you're new to home coffee roasting or you've been doing this for a long time, you're probably referencing temperatures. Temperatures are an important piece of data and we're going to be talking today about what we should be doing with that information and how it's going to help us roast great coffee. So stick around. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining me today and welcome to the Virtual Coffee Lab. This is my third video in a foundational series. I guess I'll call it the secret sauce of roasting coffee. There's no real secret sauce. All of these are really important elements and steps as we roast coffee at home or whether you're doing it for a living. And I've been slowly introducing concepts in a progression along the way. Uh, Jay, one of our viewers here on the channel. He kind of picked up on that on that last video. Um, thanks for watching Jay and yes I intend to use all of my different coffee roasters during this video um, series and the progression. So today we're focusing on coffee roasting temperatures. Last week we talked about uh, heat management and we used one single variable and that was heat over time. And then in my very first video, we used a hot air popcorn popper, which really is an entry level roasting device that has no control unless you modify it. So yes, we are progressing. Today we're gonna to be focusing on times and we're gonna be roasting on the Be More. I chose the Be More today because it is, it's a great roaster, number one. It's, it's probably one of the most significant contributions to the home coffee roasting hobby that I can think of. Uh, it's been around for a long time and it is a fully capable roaster. Uh, I like it because it really has two variables. Um, technically there's more variables. You can use charge weight as a variable, but it basically has heat where you can alter the power setting on the roaster and there is a air fan that kicks on in kind of an automatic mode depending upon the size of the roast you're doing. We'll get into that in just a minute. But we're gonna be roasting on the Be More. We're gonna be using that single variable, heat, and then we're gonna be talking about temperatures that occur during our roast progression and how we should interpret those. Now, I, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say you need to be at this temperature at this time because I can't. I can't do that because my roaster is unique I have a certain amount of power that's coming out of the wall, my cord is a certain length, and my uh, the basement that I'm roasting in here has a certain temperature. And even if you had the same model be more that I had, our temperatures are gonna vary in this comparison that you would try to make and do the exact same thing that I do. So we teach in concepts, we talk about things in a way that we can all relate to. And so as you read your temperatures, you'll be able to understand and interpret how this applies. We're gonna get the roast started right now. You'll notice that I'm using a timer. This is the Coffee Roasting Timer app. This app is free, it's browser-based, so it's really not an app, I keep calling it an app, but it's basically a, something you can use in a browser on your tablet, uh, on your phone, and it's free to use. It basically allows you to record uh, first crack as well as drop and also your um, weights before and after the roast so you can determine moisture loss and we'll do that here in this video. All right, so we've started the roast and immediately the drum starts to turn and the beans start moving around in the drum. And every 30 seconds or so I plan to check the temperature and mark it here. So on the left you'll see me writing down the time as well as the temperature. Now just a little uh, transparency here, I did not um, start writing the temperatures at the exact moment and I was pretty busy managing the roast. So lesson number one, always be prepared to have everything set up ahead of time. Uh, number two, I'm like maybe 10, well, maybe 15 seconds late on writing down some of the, the temps for the time that I check them. So um, it's still gonna work, don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm doing. So we're approaching the one minute mark as we roast this coffee and we're starting to look at temperatures. 
Notice how the temperature hasn't really changed. Take a close look. It's been 250 degrees for the first minute, and let's see what happens. It's 257 degrees uh, there at the one minute mark. So it's now starting to progress, but for the first minute or a minute and a half, I've been going really easy on this roast. Take a look and you'll see on the display, P2 is blinking. I'm in the manual mode. That's 25% heat right now. I'm going to start pouring on the heat here in just a few seconds. We'll be increasing it to about 75% heat, but I'm monitoring these temperatures. Now, why am I going slow with my roast? Uh, I'm going slow because I want the beans on this roaster especially. I've noticed that when I really push the roast hard, the outside seems to get roasted a little more than the inside. So I'm trying to get an even roast. And I'm using temperatures. This is point number one. I'm using temperatures as a reference to help me understand how much heat is being exposed to the beans themselves and how that might influence the beans. If I, if I come in on a roast with a super, super high temperature, I'm going to be roasting the bean more on the outside than on the inside. I guess what I mean by that is, is that there'll be darker roasted coffee on the outer side of the bean compared to the inner portions of the bean, and I'm trying to get an even roast. All right, so now the temperatures are going to be going up. I just moved it up to P5. Now we're going to 100% power, and we're two and a half minutes into the roast. So this is something that uh, a lot of Be More people may not be doing. Uh, I did it on this roast because I'm using a natural coffee, so this um, bean is a little more sensitive to heat. Uh, number two, I'm doing it, as I mentioned, because I'm trying to prevent you know, an uneven roast. And three, I'm also preventing roasting defects. Roasting defects, I've got a video on that you can check out. I'll have it up here in the corner. But roasting defects is another thing you don't want to do. You don't want to have um, like charred outside the bean. You don't want to have charred marks, burn marks, or blistering. You don't want to have tipping where the heat comes out the end of the bean and there's these little black little burn marks on the tips of the bean. And so I'm trying to prevent all of that. Roasting defects also include uh, like underdevelopment. I guess that's a roasting defect. So I'm trying to have an even roast all the way through. We are now approaching the four minute mark, but I'm going to be running down to 330 temperature here in just a second. There it is, 279 degrees. Now, Temperatures are helpful for us when we get familiar with our own roasting machines because we use them to know what our limits are as we're roasting. This Beemore has a limit of about 320 degrees during the first five minutes, 325, maybe even a little bit more. But I don't want to get too close to that because uh, the, the machine will potentially turn off because it gets too hot during that first few minutes and so that's kind of a safety feature built in so i am intentionally going to be staying under 320 degrees during this roast um yeah so here we are 290 degrees and so you'll see me manage the heat i'm pushing these buttons for two reasons one when i push the b button i'm checking the temperature the environmental temperature when i push any of the P buttons, P1 through P5, I'm managing the power and you'll see the display um, show you what power setting is currently being used right now. Right now I'm at full power, P5, and we are five minutes into the roast. The fan is just turning on on the Beemore. I'm at 300, uh, let's get my temp here. And you'll see 315 degrees. Now, if I start reading my temperatures after this, you'll see that they start to go down a little bit, and that's because the fan is starting to circulate the air. Uh, the temperatures will start to rise again, and uh, inside the roaster, there is a noticeable difference in temperature when I'm using like a real probe to measure temperature. So it's not just the Beemore giving me a false reading here. Okay, uh, we are approaching the 530 temperature 
which I'm gonna write down here in just a second. Here it is, 313 degrees. The good news is we didn't lose a lot of heat on that, so I'm really happy about that. All right, so at the six minute mark, I'm my goal is to hit first crack about six minutes, and then uh, we're gonna have a, a 10 minute or so first crack, and then a 12 minute total roast time. So the half a pound setting that I used here gave me 12 minutes on the clock and it's counting down and I'm not gonna add any more time. The Be More allows you to do that, but uh, we're just gonna do a 12 minute roast here. And yeah, so yeah, six minutes is dry. I just wrote that down. We're headed to the 630 temperature here in just a minute. All right, so as we talk more about temperatures, Temperatures are used to help us uh, predict and determine event times. And you've heard me say we're going to hit six minutes at this time. We're going to hit uh, first crack at this time. I can tell you that for, for two reasons. One is, and on the BMOR, it's mostly because of uh, color. And that's the sense that I'm using. So I'm using color and I'm smelling, you'll see me wafting a little bit here. I wanna smell the coffee, so I wanna know what's going on. I'm starting to smell some baked goods while I'm roasting this. There I am wafting right now because I wanna know what's happening to this coffee. The lighting in the Be More isn't the greatest, so you'll see me use a flashlight. That helps me to monitor bean color. Um, also, the amount of time, and as I'm progressing in my temperatures, I know approximately what temperatures I would be at uh, when I reach uh, like dry end. How much time has it been at these temperatures? I can get a pretty good estimate of where I'm going to be. On the drum roaster, I've got an actual temperature probe, a bean probe, and so I can even more closely monitor my temperatures and be even more precise based on my roaster history, the type of bean that I'm using that I'm familiar with. I can, you know, determine dry end within a couple degrees of a certain temperature that I hit. So that's pretty cool. That's another reason we use temperatures while we roast coffee. 313 degrees is our current temperature that we're at right now at the eight minute mark. I've got two more minutes till I am reaching uh, first crack. And so I'm still at P5 here, but you're gonna see me toggle back and forth between P5, P4, and then as we get closer, you may even see me lower it more down to P2, depending upon if I'm trying to slow the roast down or whether I'm trying to just keep first crack going. So uh, when I approach first crack, I want to keep the momentum until I know I've got a good crack starting, and then I will start to back down my heat. And I will make slow adjustments, and you'll see that happen here in just a second. Now, I just backed it down to P3, and I'm probably gonna go up to P4 here uh, shortly. And that's because my temperatures are, uh, you know, th they're up there. Um, that's why I went down to P3 because we're right at that limit, that 320 to 325 degree limit. And from this point on, it's gonna be downward in my temperatures. So I'm now moving it to, uh, from P3, I'm checking my temperatures and my next temperature, I'm gonna see that, yeah, it's going down and I'm gonna add uh, more heat now, P4, 75%. So I went from 100% down to 50% power just so that I would not overheat. And then uh, as it started to come down, I went back up to 75% power. And that's because I can reference my temperatures to tell me what to do. That's another benefit of my temperatures is I can see if I am applying too much heat or not enough heat, if I'm applying it too fast or if I'm applying it too slow. Remember, my target was first crack, which it's happening right now. I wanted to hit first crack at 10 minutes, and so I kept P5 going 100% power because I wanted to make sure I met that time. I backed it off because I didn't want to overheat the roaster, and if I would have kept it up at 324, I probably would have come to first crack a little bit sooner than 10 minutes. So that's just a little clue on how you can use your heat to make these minor adjustments for short periods of time just to kind of keep you on track with your milestones. Now, 
Okay, so here I am. I'm doing something really quick here. My temperatures were a little higher than I wanted them. I poured on that power to try to get me to my temperature, event temperature at first crack. And then I had a little too much momentum going. So I cracked the door open there for just a few seconds just to lower the heat to make sure that I could get the temperatures down. I don't want to over roast this coffee. You can see me talk about this in more detail in my last video where I deal with uh, heat management and I don't want to have my color of my bean get too dark because that is a reference for temperature. Bean color is a reference for your overall temperature of your bean and we don't have a bean probe to tell us that so we use color as a reference to help us manage how much heat we want to apply to these beans before we drop them out of the roaster. I've got 10 seconds left. This is coming out of the roaster and I'm, my goal is for that medium roast. We have a declining temp. Now we're down to 291 and the cooling mode has just started. So the heat has stopped. The cool air is starting to blow into the roaster. But I want to get these beans out and into the cooling tray I have for my drum right here. They're going to cool in that uh, tray right there and it's going to get cool really quick. All right, so success, success. We pulled the roast at, at 12 minutes, exactly like I wanted. We hit first crack at 10.04, a few seconds after I wanted, and we hit the six minute dry um, event when we had uh, predicted and when we had wanted to do that. So now the beam ore is gonna be cooling down and I'm not gonna waste our time showing that, but I wanna talk to you about what we do next we're going to take a look at these beans we're going to look at the color of the beans and here we go there they are i'm pouring them into the dish they've already cooled off i, I cut ahead a few minutes and these are going to be weighed in just a second but that's a great color that's the color that it looks very similar almost identical to the color we had in the coffee last week Depends on the lighting um, with my phone when I use that. Like this is a little more of a yellow hue. Um, and again, you're going to see those yellow looking beans. There's a couple Quakers in, in there, but some of that is just chaff that has not come off on the beans. All right, so now it's time to weigh them. This is really going to tell us where we land when, in our roast level. We take the total accumulated uh, weight of the green beans that we started with and we'll go ahead and get them up here on the screen. Here we go. We had 226.8 grams uh, of green coffee, and we ended up with 194.84. And the moisture calculation, the weight loss is 14.09%. So 14 is that uh, percentage that we have been hovering around during these roasts, and that's going to tell us the roast level that we want. Okay, so to summarize in this roast, how did we use temperatures? How did we use them to help us with our roast? One, we used temperatures to help us preheat our roaster. So we had the roasting environment preheated to a certain temperature, a starting temperature that's called the charge temperature. That's the temperature that the beans go into the roaster, 250 degrees. Then we also referenced temperatures during this early stage where I went nice and easy on the beans and we hovered around the 250 to 260 degree mark for a couple of minutes and then we started to pour on the power. So the variable that we used was heat only and we referenced temperatures, the roasting environment temperature to help us know when to pour on more heat. Then we also referenced temperatures as we are, we're working our way towards the dry phase. We left the power uh, once we got going at 100% to work our way up. And we were monitoring temperatures to help keep us in a safe zone so that the roaster wouldn't overheat. Once we reached dry end, the dry event, and we were working our way towards first crack, we had the fan turn on and we could see the influence that that had because we were able to reference temperatures and I was able to toggle my power settings to different settings to help me navigate through that fan event that the Be More has. Then I referenced temperatures when we were getting close to first crack 
and first crack started and I realized that I needed to slow things down quicker and I couldn't do that with just the temperature so I cracked the door open for just a few seconds. And then I referenced temperatures to confirm that I had a downward trend on my temperatures during development so that we could help slow the roast down and uh, also to help keep the bean color from getting too dark. Ultimately, as I mentioned in my previous videos, the bean color is really going to be your true compass when it comes to temperatures. Um, temperatures as in the impact of the bean itself, the temperature of the bean itself. We don't have a bean probe, so we can't reference that. If you do have a bean probe, I would caution you that depending upon your roasting method, the way that you are applying heat, you can have a variance in temperature of the, the bean probe by uh, five or seven degrees and temperature. If you're pouring on a lot of heat in the roasting environment, you're going to influence that bean probe and have a higher reading than maybe if you would have gone slower and you may have a more accurate reading with the bean temperature. Um, I was listening to Rob Hoos talk about that and he mentioned seven degrees that he'd seen uh, depending upon you know how much power was being applied and so we can't just rely on just the temperature itself. So these are all reasons why we want to reference temperatures, but we can't let temperatures be the be-all or the everything for a roast. We still have to use our senses. We have to smell. We have to listen for first crack. We have to listen to maybe the tumbling and know when the beans are really starting to get lighter. If you're using an air roaster, you can watch the loft and notice that there's going to be a difference in the way that the coffee is bouncing up and down. And then ultimately we're going to be smelling the coffee towards the end of the roast the best that we can and we're going to be watching the bean color so that we don't over roast the coffee or that it's not under roasted. Okay, so how does this coffee taste? It tastes really good. It tastes a little better than the uh, last roast we did on the, the popper. It's a little more of a cleaner roast. Uh, it has a little more complexity to it and uh, it definitely has all of the notes that we um, have been talking about in this roaster. The Be More roasts some great coffee. There's people that are professional roasters right now and they started on the Be More. Uh, that was one of their primary roasters. They started to learn how to roast coffee on. So it's a great roaster. Okay, so uh, before we move on, if this video has been helpful for you guys, hit the like button right now, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell. I upload videos regularly. The next video that's going to be coming out is us talking about uh, the graph. We're going to be talking about a roasting plan. We're going to be talking about the graph and we're going to be talking about why we're doing this and how we would use this graph during a roast. So we're going to actually plot a roast before we do it and then we're going to roast the coffee and we're going to be using a different roaster than the Beemore. Have you considered using your temperatures to help you gauge things like your dry phase and how long and what temperatures you need to be at in order to get you to your uh, dry event. Are you guys looking at your temperatures, a temperature that you want to be at at first crack? The Be More, like I said, doesn't have a bean temperature, but many of us may have a target goal for a temperature to get to first crack. And so my question to you is, how consistent is that temperature? Some of you may say it's very consistent, and that's awesome. Those are anchors. Those are references that we can really, um, that we really want to hold on to and use to help us because it's just more information, and it's a better way for us to get consistent roasts, and it's a better way for us to learn from our mistakes. So for me, on this roast that I did, my mistake was, that I got a little too aggressive with the heat as we were coming into first crack and I didn't back the heat off soon enough. I was more concerned about getting a rolling, good rolling crack started and then backing my heat down and I, I probably could have done a better job at that. So temperatures are really important. 
understanding those temperatures are really important, but most of all, know that temperatures are used in various ways to give you information to help guide you through your roast. The most important piece of information and data that you have that's gonna give you a great successful roast is not just a temperature, it's your senses. It's your sight, it's your smell, and it's your sound. And those are things, as I mentioned in my last video, we need to practice. And now, as we introduce temperatures into our roasting environment, we need to learn how we can apply those to help us get through a successful roast. So take a look at your roaster temperature, pay attention to it, start to plot out the temperatures like I did so that you can see what's happening at each moment in the roast. I can easily go back and look at my chart and I can see the mistakes that I made or what I should have done or how the roast behaved differently. I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. Please share your comments, share your thoughts. I know that I probably have left some stuff out. This is just one way to help us get more information so that we can roast better coffee. Tell me what you think. I'd love to hear it. Thanks for joining me today and I hope you have a great week roasting. We'll see you next time. Thank you.